So in this video, we are going to learn how to automatically add new events from Eventbrite to Google Calendar. Let's say you and your team members are using Eventbrite to create, manage and host all the online and offline events. And we want to add those same events in your Google Calendar as well. So let me tell you, you can completely automate this process. So in this automation, whenever a new event will be created in Eventbrite, automatically with the same details, you can add those events in your Google Calendar as well. Now, if you want to know how you can set up this kind of automation, for that, you just have to come with me to my screen. So as you can see, this is my Eventbrite account. Now I want that whenever a new event is created in Eventbrite, I want to add that same event in my Google Calendar as well. In this way, on my Google Calendar, I have all the upcoming events, appointments, and important dates. Now to do this, we have to connect Eventbrite with Google Calendar and we will be using an automation and integration platform called Public Connect to do so. So here you can see we are on Public Connect's dashboard and to reach this dashboard, you will get a free sign up link of Public Connect in the description box below. After coming to this dashboard, we have to create an automation workflow inside Public Connect. So just click on this create workflow button and give this workflow a name. So let's say I would like to name my workflow as Eventbrite to Google Calendar. Even right to Google Calendar. You can basically give any other name of your choice. Then just select the folder of your Public Connect account in which you want to create the workflow and then just click on create. Now you can see the workflow is open over here. And in this workflow, you can see two different windows. The first one is the trigger window and second one is the action window. So triggers and actions are basically those two concepts, those two principles on which this whole automation works on where the trigger says when this happens and the action says do this. So let's start with our trigger window. Now the idea here is first we are going to connect our Eventbrite account with Public Connect in the trigger step so that whenever a new event is created in Eventbrite, automatically the details of that event will be received inside Public Connect and this automation workflow will trigger, it will start. Then after that, using this public connect automation, we are going to add the details of that same event to Google Calendar and we are going to create an event in our Google Calendar as well. So let's see how it is done. Starting from our trigger window in Choose App, search for Eventbrite. Just select it. After selecting Eventbrite in Trigger Event from the dropdown, select the trigger event as New Event Created. Now here in this dropdown, you can see two different events new event created which we are going to select but we also have an event called event published let's say you want to add the event when it is published on eventbrite only in that case you want to add those events in google calendar so by selecting this particular trigger event you can get the details of only published event and then you can add them in google calendar as well you can use any trigger as per your choice i will be selecting new event created as the trigger then just click on connect and select add new connection. Now here we have to connect our Eventbrite account with Public Connect. And to make this connection, click on this connect with Eventbrite button. Now as we click on connect, because I have already logged into my Eventbrite account in my browser, in this pop-up window, Public Connect will detect the same account and ask us for the permission. Just click on allow and as we click on allow, we will see our Eventbrite account will get connected with Public Connect. And after making this connection, here it is asking us for the organization. That in your Eventbrite account, if you have multiple organizations created or you are added in multiple organizations in Eventbrite, in this dropdown, you will get a list of all of them. Right now, in my account, I have only one organization that is named as Samuel Hayden. So here from this dropdown, I am going to select that. After selecting the organization, just click on Save and Sign Test Request. And after clicking on save and send test request, it has now changed to waiting for a response. This means Public Connect is waiting to get the response, get the details of a new event being created in Eventbrite. So let's do it. We are going to create a new event in our Eventbrite account. I will just go to this event section and then click on this create event button. Now let's say I want to create an event from the scratch. So I'll be selecting start from scratch. And then here it is asking us for the event page. So here, here let's say I'm using this dummy image we, which we already have. The title of this event is for example, music concert. Just taking a demo example, a test event. The name of the event is music concert. Then the summary is for example, 
So here I have already copied the summary of the event. I'll just paste it over here. Just a dummy summary over here. After entering the details, it is asking us for the date and time and the location of the event. Let's say the date of the event is 31st of March 2024 and the start time is 10 a.m. and the end time is, for example, I'll just change it to, for example, 3 p.m. over here. Then after that, it is asking us for the location. So is it a physical location? You have to enter the venue over here. If it is a virtual event, then it can select online event and enter the details. But right now, I haven't confirmed the venue or the location. So I'll be selecting to be announced over here. Then it is asking us about the event. So here we have to enter a description of the event. So if you want, you can just enter the description as per your choice, or you can use the AI tools of Eventbrite to generate a description for your event as well. Let's say I'm using this particular description. So this will be the description for the event, just a random description, which we have added. Then we'll scroll down and we will move to the next section. Like I don't want to add any agenda or FAQ, so I'm just ignoring it for now. I'll just click on save and continue. Now, as I click on save and continue, here you can see we have started creating an event in our Eventbrite account. And as you enter the basic details and build an event page, automatically within few seconds, you will see in our Fably Connect workflow, in the trigger step, we have received some response. And in this response, you will get some basic details of the new event, which we have just now created. So we have entered the basic details. Now we just have to select the tickets over here for that particular event that how many tickets we are selling, how many tickets we are having, and then we have to publish the event. Let's say I'm selecting 25 tickets. So I'll just click on continue. And after clicking on continue, we have to select the ticket type. That is, is it a paid ticket, a free ticket or donation? So let's say I'm selecting free ticket. I'm adding 25 free tickets over here and then just click on save. Now, after this, what we have done just now by entering the details of this event, we have received a response inside Public Connect for the same event details. Now, here in these responses, we have the webhook ID, we have the user ID that which particular user has created the event. We have the endpoint URL over here that on this particular endpoint, Eventbrite has sent the data. We have the event that for which particular event we have received the data. And at last, you can see this API URL. And we only have these details. We don't have the rest of the details like the event name, event description, and all of that. Now what we have to do in the next step from this API URL responses after event slash, we have this event ID. Now using this event ID, we have to retrieve the details of this event in the next step. But before doing that, we have to extract this event ID from this trigger step responses. So what we are going to do, we will just scroll down and come to this action step. But before that, let me tell you here while creating the event in Eventbrite, we have entered all the details over here. Now we just have to publish this event on our Eventbrite account. So I'll just move to the publish section and then here you can publish that as well. But right now I'll get back to the public connect and then here we will see how you can extract the details of this event and create the event in Google Calendar over here. Now to extract the details of the event, first we have to get the event ID from this complete URL. We have to extract the details of this particular event ID and we will be using the feature, a module of public connect called text formatter. So here in this action step, we will search for text formatter and just select it. After selecting text formatter by Pabli, an action event from the dropdown, we have to select the action event as text parser. Then just click on connect. After clicking on connect, it is asking us for the text. That what is the text? What is the response from which we want to extract some data? So we want to extract the event ID from this response of API URL. So we are going to map this response of API URL from this trigger step of Eventbrite to this text formatter action step. And the process of mapping is very simple. Simply click on this field of text and here in this drop down, you can see a list of all the responses which we have received from Eventbrite. Out of all of these responses, select the response of API URL and it will be mapped over here. Then after mapping this API URL, here it is asking us text match after. Now we have the event ID after this event slash in this URL. So text match after will be events slash because we want to extract the text after this in this URL in this API URL. So we have entered event slash as the text match after. And we want to get the ID which is before this last slash. So the text match before will be slash over here. So we have entered the text match after and text match before. Now just click on this save and send test request. 
And after clicking on Siemens and test request here, you can see from this complete API URL, we have extracted the ID of the event. We have extracted the event ID. Now in the next step, using this event ID, you can retrieve the details of the event which we have not received in the trigger step responses. And to retrieve these details, just click on this add action step button over here. And here in choose zap, search for event write once again. Just select it. After selecting event write in action event from this drop down, we are going to select the action event as get event. Now just click on connect. And because we have connected our event write account with public connect in the trigger step, we don't have to make a new connection over here. You can select the existing connection and click on save. After clicking on save, here it is asking us for the event ID. Now here in this field of event ID, we have to map the same event ID which we have extracted using text formatter. So from text formatter responses, we have to map this response of event ID to this get event action step. Just click on this field and the process of mapping stays the same. Here from the drop down from text formatter responses, select and map the event ID. After mapping the event ID, just click on save and send test request. After clicking on save and send test request, here you can see we have received some response. And in this response, you will see all the details of the event which we have entered just now while creating this event in Eventbrite. We have the name of the event that was music concert. We have the description of the event, the same description which we have added. We will scroll down further and after that here you can see the URL, the link of this event as well. We will scroll down further, we have the start date and time of the event. Then after that we have the start date and time of the event according to UTC time zone. Then after that here you can see we have the end date and time of the event as per our local time zone and we have the end date and time of the event as per the UTC time zone as well. We will scroll down further and you can see some other details like here in capacity we have the capacity ticket capacity that is 25 we will scroll down further and you can see all the other details related to this event. Also we have a summary of this event which we have added as well. So in this way, all the details of this event which we have created in Eventbrite, we have received all of these details inside Public Connect. Now after this, what we want to do, we want to create an event in our Google Calendar as well with the same details. So for that, we will just scroll down and click on this Add Action Step button over here. And here in Choose Zap, we will search for Google Calendar. Just select it. After selecting Google Calendar, an action event from the drop down, select the action event as create an event. Then just click on connect and select add new connection. Now here we have to connect our Google Calendar account with Pavli Connect. And to make this connection, click on this sign in with Google button. Now after that here in this pop up window, just select your Google Calendar account in which you want to create the event, scroll down and click on continue. And as we click on continue, we will see our Google Calendar account will get connected with Pavli Connect. After making this connection, here you can see the first thing it asks us is the calendar. So here in my Google Calendar account, I have multiple calendars over here. And list of all of these calendar can be seen in this drop down. So out of all of these, in which particular calendar you want to create the event. Let's say I want to create the event in this calendar named as reminders. So from this drop down, I'm going to select that particular calendar over here. After selecting the calendar, it is asking us for the title. That what will be the title of the new event which we are creating. And I want to add the name of the event which we have entered in Eventbrite to be the title of the event as well. So here in the previous step, while we have received, extracted or retrieved the details of the event, we have the response of the name of the event as well. So we are going to map this same response of the event name from the get event action step and we are going to map it in the Google Calendar action step and the process of mapping stays the same. Just click on this field and from the drop down from event write responses, select the response of event name and it will be mapped. Then it is asking us for the event description. So here in event description, I want to add the summary of the event which we have added. So from this drop down, just select the summary and map it too. Then it is asking us for the location, but from event bright, we haven't received the response of the location of the event that what will be the event location. Also, we have not added the event location in event bright as well while creating this event. So if you want, you can just keep this field of location as blank for now. Then it is asking us start date time that at what date and time this event is going to get started. And we have received that response from event bright as well. 
So from the drop down, what we have to do in start date, we have two options start local and start UTC. So from this drop down, we don't have to map the local time zone that is start date and time according to local time zone. We will be selecting start UTC this particular response and map it over here. We are going to enter the date and time according to UTC time zone. And after that here in end date and time, we are going to map the end UTC over here. We have this end UTC. We have the end date and time of the event according to UTC time zone. So we are going to select it and map it over here. Then it is asking us for the time zone. So here in this time zone section, we will just turn this mapping button on and clear the default response. And after clearing the default response, we are going to map the response of time zone. So from event bright, we have received the start time zone and the end time zone. You can select any particular time zone over here. In this way, the event will be created in our Google Calendar account as per the time zone of your event bright account. That according to whatever time zone you have created the event in event bright on the same time zone with the same time zone, the event will be created in Google Calendar. Then it is asking us for the visibility. So let's say I want to keep the visibility of this event as public so you can select it. Now, if you want, you can add some kind of guest to this event as well. But right now I don't have any guest of this event. And also we haven't received the details of the event guest from event right. So if you want, you can just ignore these fields for now. At last here, you can see event recurrence rule. So if you want to create a recurring event in your Google Calendar account, then in that case, you have to enter the recurrence rule. Right now, I don't want to create any recurring event. That's why I'm just keeping this field of recurrence rule as blank. And after that, just click on save and send test request button. Now, when we click on save and send test request, here you can see we have received some response. And this response seems to be a positive response to us. This response shows that the details which we have mapped over here of a new event, basically the details of a new event, which we have received from event right using these same details, we have created an event. We have marked that event in our Google calendar as well. So let's see, we will go to our Google calendar and we will just go to that particular date. So the month was March, the date was 31st and yes, for 31st of March, an event is created in our Google calendar. The name of the event is music concert, the same event name, which we have given in event right. Then after that, here you can see the same duration that the event is from 31st of March over here. Then you can see the same description of the event as well. So in this way, all the details of that event can be seen in our Google calendar. We have marked that same event in Google calendar as well. And this also means that the automation workflow, which we have created is working perfectly fine. Now after setting up this automation, let's test this automation workflow once. I will go back to my Eventbrite account and I'll just start creating a new event once again in Eventbrite. Let me click on this create event button and I'll be creating the event from the scratch once again. And this time I want the name of the event to be, for example, test event. So let me just name it as test event. And the summary is, for example, we are testing this automation. I'll select the data. The date of this event is, for example, 22nd of Feb. The time is 10 a.m. and the end time is, for example, 6 p.m. The event location is to be announced and then let's save and continue. So just now what we have done, we have started creating a new event and we have entered the basic details of this event in our event right account. And we will see as we enter these details and start creating the event automatically within few seconds, the same event will be marked, will be created in Google calendar as well. So I will go to Google calendar and we will go to the same date. And yes, here you can see for 22nd of Feb, the same date, which we have selected by creating this event an event is created in Google calendar as well. You can see the event is from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on 22nd of Feb. The event name is test event and we have the same description as well. This means this automation is working perfectly fine. So not just these applications, you can connect plenty of other applications with Pavli Connect. And one more important thing, you will get a clone link of this exact same workflow in the description box below. By clicking on that link, you can clone the same workflow into your own Pavli Connect account and use this automation workflow for free. Also, let me tell you, Pavli Connect offers you a free plan. And in this plan, you will get some free tasks every month into your own Pavli Connect account. So if you want to try and test this automation, you can do it for absolutely free. If you have any kind of doubts or queries, you can email us at support at or post it on our forum over here. Or you can write us in the comment box below too. 
If you want to check out the pricing of Pavli Connect, you can visit this link. And if this video was helpful to you, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Pavli. So this is it for today's video. Thank you. Have a great day.